Thank you for joining us for another episode of Exposing Scientology, where we reveal what really goes on inside this business masquerading as a church. Um, in our prior episode, yes, we discussed the framing of people of people who speak out against Scientology. Yes. And that has been a patent and practice of Scientology since, um, you know, the 60s, maybe even the 50s, but definitely the 60s. And then certainly in the 70s, where we saw the, the framing of Paulette Cooper to the point where she was being criminally prosecuted in federal court <laughs> for something that she was completely set up for the framing of the former mayor of Clearwater, Gabe Cazares for a hit and run accident that was completely and utterly staged. Mm -hmm. And we went through more examples of people being framed, including the guy who uh, was set up um, for uh, the incident in, in Los Angeles, which then allowed Rick Moxon to go in Kendrick Moxon, lawyer extraordinaire for Scientology, uh, mm -hmm. poster child for fair game to go in and try and weasel some deal that if this guy would say you were the cause of the acts that he committed, whatever they may be, that Scientology would go easy on him. Right. And, you know, we we covered a few other examples in that episode. But now we have something that is, is almost, <laughs> almost impossible to contemplate. Mm -hmm. And I know that we have talked about this a lot um, between ourselves, Leah, about the the disgust we felt of being accused of having incited the murder of a Scientologist. Um, and this is something that that Scientology did after this tragic incident that occurred in Australia. And um, you know, like, it was pretty much immediately after this happened that Scientology started claiming that the cause of this tragic murder where a young man stabbed someone at, at the advanced organization in Sydney, Australia, was because of us inciting him through the Aftermath show. And, I, it, and, it, and, and it it still yeah. drives me it still drives yeah. me crazy I know. about th this particular thing because it was so horrible. It, yes. Because because you know, let's back up for a second. In 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 the, our prior episode, we talked about the framing of people that Scientology. It's in its policies to do so, right? So right. Fair game as a policy, um, but but there are thousands of policies. Uh, fair game is just one that we use as the banner of which uh, Scientology and Scientologists, civilian and staff members, feel justify their behavior of tweeting lies about people making videos about their own family members who have spoken out against Scientology, uh, who have reported crimes to the police. Um, so this all justifies under the banner of fair game. But like I said, it's thousands of policies. That Scientology uh, tries to get away with the fact that this policy has been canceled is asinine for a few reasons, but one is that the policy actually doesn't say that it's canceled. What it says <laughs> is putting it in writing is canceled. The term fair game will stop being used because it caused bad public relations because people were finding out about it. However, the handling of suppressive people, which are what were called enemies, suppressive people in groups, uh, by the way, the government is in that, the police are in that, and... Um, 
everybody that isn't a Scientologist is usually in the category of a suppressive person or group. Um, so this uh, is not canceled. Not only is it not canceled, and don't take our word for it. Again, Mike, let's post the history of fair game that we're talking about, Gabe Casares. The operations were uncovered by the FBI when they conducted a raid on Scientology premises in Los Angeles and Washington. And these programs that are designed to destroy a person or a group is written out by Scientology staff members. Uh, at that time, in the 60s and 70s, they were referred to as guardians and assistant guardians. And the head of the guardian's office was L. Ron Hubbard's wife. Mary Sue Hubbard, who went to prison for fair gaming the government. <laughs> True. And other people. Okay. So now, here we go. We fast forward, and then we see more operations coming forward from the FBI. And let's let people see all these operations, because I don't, I don't, the problem is when you look at an operation from the Guardian's office or OSA, it's written in Scientology. So even the heading, people don't understand what they're looking at, right? Like right. OSA, <laughs> it says OSA NW Inch, oh. <laughs> you know, which stands for OSA Network Orders. Right. Um, and before it was Guardian's office um, issue, blah, 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 right? Like, and it was numbered. And so when you look at even the heading, you're like, what the fuck am I looking at here? Right? Yep. So yep. these are operations that Scientology had written out, typed it out to destroy people. One of them was plant a person uh, in, in the four year, uh, former mayor of, of Clearwater, uh, plant a woman uh, in his life and then try to frame him for running over somebody like in the car, like the, so this woman's supposed to befriend Gabe Casares somehow get in his car. Then they were going to have another Scientology operator uh, lay in the middle of the freeway or whatever it was street. And Gabe was supposedly supposed to have run this person over and then was supposed to have run away from the accident. And then the Scientology operative was then to, call the police and then write the government and say that this man shouldn't be, because at the time I think he was running for, for office, right? For Congress. Or yes. Something? I think he was running for. Uh, wrote, oh, but he, was he was to write his opponent. It was to write his opponent and say, uh, Gabe Casares is not only having an affair, but then he ran over this woman and da, da, da. And do you know that the, his opponent actually sent that letter to the FBI? going, this is some crazy shit. And I think Gabe Casares is being framed. Like, God bless this man, right, for doing so. Um, but so now if you see the operations that were done, like you're talking about, and like we talked about in our prior episode with Kendrick Rick Moxon, whatever he calls himself, um, the operations of then today, 2016, when uh, the OSA operations were leaked uh, of... Turetsky, a professor at CMU, of um, former Scientologists. It says it's the same thing, Mike. Uh, have Barbara Schwartz, who's a Scientology operative, go on the websites, befriend these people who are speaking out against Scientology on these blogs and on these, you know, sites that people were were talking to each other. Right, they're like they were connecting and telling each other each other stories and being their support system. Infiltrate these, try to befriend these people, then uh, start to feed lurid sex crimes on the, that this person's a uh, guilty of crimes, and it's like it's written out. Everybody, like it's so. And now here we are again today with you, with me, with the Hidleys, with Amy Scobie, like anybody who has spoken out. There's an operation on. Yep, that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah, and and I want to focus, or we want to focus on one such operation. Yeah. Um, and I I mentioned this this incident of this murder in Australia, and 
that Scientology then used this to accuse you and accuse me sort of as your sidekick of having um, incited this murder. And I'm just going to put this up if I can get it to come up. This is just one example of the press that Scientology ran around and generated claiming that Leah Remini has blood on her hands and this, um, there were many, many articles, numerous things on their websites. Their Twitter trolls were, were working feverishly over time, spreading this story that we had incited a murder in Australia. Uh -huh. And we, uh, uh, there was no evidence to support this, and we knew that we had had nothing to do with this person. It came out of the blue. The We were, like, shocked and incensed that anybody would be accusing us of this. Mm -hmm. But we had no way of actually proving anything because the person that committed the murder was a minor mm -hmm. and all of the documentation and information was kept completely confidential about what had gone on and the debriefs and the people who were interviewed by the police and the prosecution and everything. Uh, we tried to get that information at the time and because he was a minor, we were unable to and journalists in Australia tried to get it and mm -hmm. they were unable to. The only people that knew what really happened was A, Scientology, B, Scientology, and C, Scientology. Not even the police or the prosecutors really knew what happened, and I will explain or we will explain a little bit about that too. Uh -huh. But one of the things in your lawsuit, Leah, uh, you make mention of this and say, you know, this this is outrageous that they have tried to frame me and position me as having incited murder and that this is, is uh, just beyond reproach. Uh -huh. And in response, <laughs> as is typical, Scientology doubled down. Uh -huh. They doubled down with uh, a declaration from this guy, Lynn Fani. And Lynn Fani is like the go-to guy in the Office of Special Affairs International who has been in the legal department there for, I don't know, 40 years now or something. Uh -huh. um, and he is a slippery character who has the attributes, the same attributes of uh, Warren McShane. Warren McShane is the president of Religious Technology Center, and he is the, the, the guy who was put forth by David Miscavige when Religious Technology Center has to make a declaration or someone has to be deposed. And Warren McShane famously oh, is, is Warren McShane? Yeah. <laughs> Another former Guardian's office person who was the intelligence officer of the Guardian's office, New York. Got you. And David Miscavige keeps him around, and he has told me this. He told Marty Rathman this. He told Claire this. He's told all sorts of people. The only reason that Warren McShane remains in the position that he is in is because he's a good liar. And that that is useful when it comes to depositions and filing declarations in legal cases. Sure. Lynn Fani is the Church of Scientology international equivalent of Warren McShane. Got he it. is the go-to liar face of the organization. And he filed a, a typically uh, dishonest, declaration in uh recently uh actually it was dated the 25th of october 2023 um 
And I took issue with a bunch of things that he said, and I filed a declaration in response to that, um, which uh, Tony Ortega put on his blog recently. I'll put a link to it. Uh, Leah, you filed a declaration in response to a bunch of things, but I just want to take out two paragraphs or, or highlight two paragraphs of Lynn Fani's declaration because they relate to this claim that we incited murder. Okay. And, oh, sorry, wrong one. Excerpt from Lynn Fani declaration, 25 October, 2023. He says, on January 3rd, 2019, a 16-year-old man stabbed to death a security guard at a Scientology church in Australia. The assailant had expressed anti-Scientology sentiments. The church staff member, who was a witness to the crime, asked the assailant's mother what he was reading on the internet about Scientology. And the mother showed the church staff member the line to a Chinese anti-Scientology, the link that should say, to a Chinese anti-Scientology website on her phone. Hmm. This information was reported to CSI after the incident. On January 7, 2019, I accessed the website, saw that it contained links to Remini's Aftermath television show, as well as to Mike Rinder's website. I downloaded a copy enclosed herewith as Exhibit 34. Okay. <laughs> Let's just take this bit a, a bit by bit here, Leah, yeah. because this is, like I said, Scientology doubling down, trying to support the false claim that this guy was incited by our show. Mm -hmm. And at the time that Lynn Fani wrote this, he obviously was unaware of the fact that there now may be some evidence to the contrary, mm -hmm. which we will get to shortly. Okay. But the church staff member who was a witness to the crime, as you will see, there was definitely more than one church staff member witness to this crime. Ask the assailant's mother what he was reading on the internet about Scientology. Now, that is a very bizarre, very bizarre question. Mike, first of all, this, <laughs> this is a child that we're talking about, um, the one who committed this crime. Right. Child who, per court, court documents, uh, was diagnosed at a young age um, with some mental illness and um, wasn't, I mean, this is not, uh, we're not talking about a man. We're talking about a child. I know, although Fani yeah. tries to say a 16-year-old man. Correct. It's a child. He, he, he's, he was a, he, he's a child. And he was in need of, of um, care that he didn't receive, especially later in life uh, when his mother got him into Scientology. Um, right. Okay. Because it's just deep coincidence that the child was taken off his medication that he needed. Uh, just deep coincidence of getting into Scientology. Now, a murder takes place. And then somebody who was witness to this horrific crime, horrific crime, to see somebody murdered, runs up to the assailant's mother, right? The, and says, what was he reading on the internet? Is that a question that somebody asks after witnessing a murder? Runs up to the mother of the assailant and says, what was the, what was your son watching on, or listening to on the internet that made him commit murder? That's what we're all supposed to believe, Mike? It's insane, Leah. This is this is the incident with Armando Garcia and Rick Moxon going. Well, if Armando Garcia will say that Leah Remini did uh, uh, incited him to commit the act that he's being charged with, we'll reduce the the the. I mean, this and is exactly like the mother 
who has now now responsive like you know you would think right is she had been attacked the prior day right to the murder um physically by her own son that was witnessed by you know scientology staff now her son commits murder to an a, a, an innocent person an innocent security guard of scientology right and the mother has the wherewithal to go oh let me show you on my phone what my son was looking at are you out of your motherfucking minds <laughs> it is I, I mean, I'm laughing even though this is not funny it's, because it is so absurd. Mike, that it is insane. You're and, right. And it's, it's it's fucking it's, insane. It's really not funny. I, I and I don't want anybody to think I find this at all no. humorous. No, no, I no. find it like mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. And and. and even this this access, you know, he says, I accessed the website. And the website isn't the website of the Aftermath show, but the website somewhere on the bottom of the website contains links to Remini's Aftermath show as well as to Mike Rinder's website. Well, I don't even have a website, but th that doesn't matter. It's uh -huh. links. No, there's no, even if this concocted theory was true, there was absolutely no evidence he even saw the links. And not only that, he didn't speak English. The aftermath wasn't translated into Taiwanese and distributed on Taiwanese television. It, I mean, there's so many levels of insanity to this. But I also wanted to show that the, quote, evidence that this was a true statement that we had an incited murder is a letter that they sent to A&E. Mm -hmm. uh, their own letter claiming mm -hmm. that we had done this is now attached as Exhibit 35 to prove that this really is true. They made up the same shit in the letter as they told to the New York Post and everybody else. They and, just and, and this is intentional, everybody, which makes it even more sinister. That yes. someone lost their life, an innocent person, the Scientology security guard. They have, Mike, and you know this to be true, um, Scientology, especially here in, in Southern California, um, some of the most advanced camera systems and security systems, so much so that the LAPD, when I did a visit over there at the Hollywood station, the Rampart, whatever, is it the Hollywood station? I don't yeah. know if it's referred to. Um, you know, the one that's best friends with Celebrity Center. Um, yep. The one that had the kiosk. Uh, the yep. one that Polka, yeah, well, email. Yeah. yeah, that one, that one. Um, that the one, one. That did my investigation uh, into Shelly Miscavige, quote unquote. Um, uh, they told me Scientology. Uh, we go to Scientology when there's crimes um, that our cameras didn't catch because Scientology's cameras are far more reaching than our own. Right. Okay. So. Scientology is well aware, right? Because they have it on camera. What Correct. Okay. Okay. But but somehow that wasn't available to that footage wasn't available to law enforcement. Yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So, Leah, mm -hmm. um, recently. Tony Ortega put uh, an article about this on his blog mm -hmm. where these documents from that now had become available from the court. And I assume that the reason that they are now available is because enough time has passed or the age of the person who committed the crimes is now gone beyond the age the minor age, even though he is, you know, incarcerated, that 
that there is still protections that are afforded. So mm -hmm. it's some time later, and I, I don't know how or why now these documents became available, but Same. these documents tell a story that is so contradictory to mm -hmm. what Scientology has been claiming mm -hmm. since 2019, repeatedly without stopping over and over and over again, saying that Leah Remini has blood on her hands. And now the truth, which they have known since day one, mm -hmm. is finally being revealed, exposing the horrendous lies that they have been telling. And, and not to mention, Mike, there are 250 controlled accounts on Twitter. These Twitter accounts managed by Scientology, so some of them are civilian Scientologists that OSA, Scientology, the organization, activates civilian Scientologists and says, hey, so, you know, need you to tweet this out, need you to tweet that out. So these 250 accounts will now mirror per OSA operations what each other tweets. So they yes. continuously tweet out intentionally incorrect and, and and false information, outright lies intentionally. Every day, yes. hundreds of times a day. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to pull up a few excerpts from these court documents, and we're okay. just going to discuss them. This is the first one. His mother told police that when he was eight or nine years of age, he was diagnosed with, quote, an emotional disorder, unquote. Mm -hmm. She told them that when he was 14 years of age, he was diagnosed with autism. He has been prescribed Ritalin and Concerta, but stopped taking his medication in November 2018 because he did not like it. Um, he <laughs> did not like it. He did that not like it. <laughs> Now, already, um, uh, you know, I'm not blaming the mother. However, uh, you have a responsibility to your children, no matter what age, if they have a condition, uh, if they have an illness, a mental illness for which they are not taking their medication. You know, you can't hear in America. It's, it's hard, right? It's, hear, it, it's hard when your uh, child is of legal age, right, to say, you need to take your medication, right? We can't force people to take care of themselves, right? Right. But certainly uh, in this situation, uh, a responsible parent uh, would not just allow their children to just stop taking medication. It's not even advised to just stop taking your medication. Right. But yeah. in, in Leah, for, for those who are unfamiliar with Scientology, in the world of Scientology, Ritalin is oh. a sort of a catchphrase yeah. the, or, or a, a, a rallying cry. Yes. Ritalin, Ritalin, yes. Ritalin. The mm -hmm. psychiatrists are infiltrating our schools, drugging mm -hmm. our children with Ritalin. This mm -hmm. is a gateway drug to mm -hmm. other psychiatric drugs. It is a horrible thing. Uh, I mean, Ritalin is is just a, a dirty swear word in Scientology. Correct. Now, I am not saying that there are not abuses of of, <clears throat> of administering drugs to children, et cetera, et cetera. But I am saying that in the minds of Scientologists, when you hear the word Ritalin, That's you it. know no. it. This is bad. Bad. And that Ritalin does not cure. ADHD or any other ailment that any child or adult may have. Mm -hmm. Scientologists do not believe that there is anything that cures those ailments or mental impairments or well, they don't, conditions. They don't believe in any of it, Mike. They don't believe in, in mental illness. They don't believe in depression. They don't acknowledge it. And it's really for their own agenda, which is they want to abolish psychology and psychology. 
so that they could be making the money that these fields are making. Correct. Yes, period. Serious. So the idea that that any of these drugs um, are doing anything for someone is just complete anathema to Scientologists. Mm -hmm. So the idea of taking them off those drugs is like, oh, this is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. We're helping this yeah. kid by mm -hmm. taking him off these drugs. And you can bet, or I would bet, maybe not you, but I would bet, that the real story of why this boy was taken off those drugs and stopped taking his medication has nothing to do with whether he liked them or not, but has to do with the mother becoming a Scientologist and getting pressure from Scientology to take him off the drugs because that is what they do. Complete. That, that's just what they do. Completely. So then let me just go back to this. Then it goes on to say, seeking a change of environment for her son, oh, her mother God. brought him to Australia, arriving here on December 18 December 2018. Now, uh -huh. this is another seeking a change of environment is oh. another Scientological therapy. Uh, therapy. therapy. Yes. In fact, in Hubbard's book, Science of Survival, Right in the beginning, on page 20, he says there are four valid therapies, yep, yep. and one of them is change of environment. Change of environment. Okay. Look, if this mother really wanted to change the environment of her son who didn't speak English, bringing him to Australia is a very, very odd choice. And not to mention, Mike, uh, <laughs> you know, I believe, and this is just my opinion, um, that I have that I had voiced to to others, but I thought I think that the that the mother was there to join the Sea Organization, um, and I don't know that as fact, Mike. I just I somebody else told me that uh, that is <clears throat> in Australia who is familiar with the story, who suggested that to me, and then as I looked at the court documents, I thought you know this kind of makes sense, and I'm going to tell you why. She takes the boy from his home, the only home he's ever known, to move into a home that she only rented a room in. So we know how this works because we were in the Sea Org. We know that, you know, Scientologists own homes and they rent rooms to other Scientologists. So mm -hmm. it's not a home for many, for any, like any stretch of the imagination. It is a house with individual rooms and people label their food in their refrigerator, and it is not a home at all. It's 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 a horrible uh, environment. I've been in them. Um, I've seen them. I had friends who were joining the Sea Org, who came to Los Angeles and had and lived in one of those houses while they were preparing to join the Sea Org. And that means getting rid of all your personal items, selling them off, getting out of debt. Uh, wrapping up uh, uh, marriages, you know, divorcing your husband or wife that didn't want to join the Sea Org, things like that. Um, so changing this boy's environment in the way that she did, uh, I would say, and, and I'm sure mental health uh, professionals would agree, this would not be in the direction of uh, providing him a better environment um, or changing his environment for the better. Yes. Well, uh, events certainly would, as they unfolded, would certainly uh, support that Correct. contention. Correct. <laughs> okay. So let's go on and see what Scientology has always known and what we know now was the real trigger uh -huh. for him. Uh -huh. Okay. Around 1 January 2019, an employee of the Church of Scientology in Chatswood, which is the advanced organization in Sydney, approached the accused's mother and told her that the accused had possession. And when it, this refers to the accused, this is the boy, the 16 year old who committed this murder. The accused had possession of a novel 
containing pornographic and violent themes on his MP3 player. The employees suggested that the accused mother should delete the novel as it was not good for her son. The accused was not present during this conversation. As a result, the accused mother spoke to the accused and told him that what he was reading was not good for him. Hmm. Okay, let's just take this first part. Um, how did Scientology know what was on this boy's MP3 player? And why is a Scientology staff member looking through his mp3 player in the first place yes well we don't even know that anybody was looking through it they could have been they mm -hmm. may have confiscated that or taken it it says somewhere that he at some point was supposed to be going to study in in the course room mm -hmm. uh but he didn't like it and you know who knows i know uh, i i put uh i wrote an article on my blog where i made some speculation about this. In my view, there are three ways that they could have discovered this. One is they could have confiscated his MP3 player when he was going to do his studying and told him, you're not allowed to have that in the course room, which you are not, mm -hmm. and then sat and looked through it. It happens all the time. Already insane. Yes. Two, <laughs> they have cameras Everywhere, as you mentioned, Leah, the mm -hmm. most sophisticated surveillance cameras and, you know, closed circuit TV mm -hmm. that anybody, and this is a new facility. Mm -hmm. It is not an old facility. They have the latest and greatest. They could have been watching him sitting somewhere on their premises, outside even, and seen what was on his MP3 player. Mm -hmm. Or thirdly, someone could have been sitting next to him and glancing over their shoulder, watching him or seeing him looking at this, and it, those people would be required to write a report about that mm -hmm. and turn him in. Well, but here it doesn't say anything about um, <laughs> How? the aftermath or your name, Mike, or my name. I mean, these are court documents now. Uh, Farney, the good Scientologist that he is, why did why do they report uh, in the courts here in in America one thing, but in the courts in Aust in the court where the murder happened, and a trial took place, and professionals were involved, a few psychiatrists um, interviewed the, the the child after the, the this murder had taken place. Um, interviewed the mother, but nowhere mentioned that the mother say anything about me, you, the aftermath that her son was incited. Am, am I? You're not missing that. Oh, okay. You're not missing that. Right. It, it, in fact, let me just go back to this, Leah, yeah. because, okay, you, you raise a really interesting thing, which is somehow or another, this mp3 player mm -hmm. became the the sort of focus of all attention in this case and mm -hmm. quite rightly so as you'll see as we go through this is you know this was the triggering incident mm -hmm. but there's no mention of him having a phone with anything on it there is no mm -hmm. mention of any other media that this this 16 year old had but his mp3 player and when it comes to the MP3 player, the only thing that was at issue was not the terrible, horrible aftermath show or Mike Rinder's horrible website. As it was right the Porter? pornographic, yeah, violent oh. <laughs> novel. Okay, so let's go on here. On Wednesday, 2 January 2019, somewhere between 4 a.m. and 5 a.m., I mean, the detail that they have on certain of these things is in astonishing. The omissions that they have, the things yeah. that are not included, are also astonishing. Mm -hmm. The accused mother took his MP3 player from his bed while he was the accused was sleeping. She deleted all files that contained written words but did not delete any music or images. Later that day, the accused mother 
attended classes at the Church of Scientology as usual, and the accused did ob jobs around the grounds. Uh. Uh, why? Who knows? We, we, there's no explanation for this whatsoever anywhere. But at about 8.15 p.m. on that day, while his mother was in class, the accused entered the classroom and approached her. There were, at the time, two teachers and another student present. He said to her, presumably in Mandarin, mm -hmm. was it you who deleted my data? You deleted my data, didn't you? And his mother replied, I didn't. The accused said, it was you who deleted it. I'll give you 10 seconds to recover it. Mm -hmm. Now, this was the triggering incident for the 16-year-old boy who had been taken from his home in Taiwan, mm -hmm. brought to Australia, didn't speak English, was out on the grounds doing menial labor, and no longer on his medication. Uh -huh. it, well, Mike, I, 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 want, I want to start with this. Just the visual of this alone. So mm -hmm. you, so when the boy was sleeping, you, you snuck in to his area where he was sleeping or where his his player was you you stole his mp3 player then you deleted his pornographic novel or whatever it is he had on there then lied about it the mother then lies that she didn't delete so she's gaslighting now her son who already is 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 already dealing with a lot of mental anguish, not being on his medication, right? Already has a pre-existing condition that's not being treated. And you lie to your son. Right. That she didn't delete it after she admits that she did. Right. Okay. And after, after he knew that she had confronted him about this mm -hmm. the day before, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like the stupidest lie possible. Anyway, I, I didn't take this excerpt because I, you know, I don't want to trigger anybody. But what happened was he then assaulted his mother. Mm -hmm. He beat her up. In and front of her. In front of these people, the course supervisors and whoever were around. Scientology staff members. This is all caught on Scientology surveillance. Yep. Do they report... This crime, do they report that he assaulted his mother in front of three mm. Scientologists? Of course not. Oh, okay. Because that would bring bad public relations. The police would come in, then there would be an investigation into what's the deal with this kid, why mm -hmm. is he here from Taiwan, what's the deal mm -hmm. with his medication, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. So... Now we get to the probably the most important sentence in this court document of mm -hmm. all, which mm -hmm. is the accused reported to others that he had assaulted his mother because she had deleted the contents of his MP3 player. Mm -hmm. It does not say that the accused told anybody that he had assaulted his mother because he watched Leah Remini or saw Mike Rinder's website. Mm -hmm. Nothing of the sort appears anywhere. Mm -hmm. He says the reason that he assaulted his mother was because she deleted the contents of his MP3 player. Mm -hmm. And Scientology has known this since the day this incident happened. Yep. Okay. One of the persons to whom he reported this was a staff member by the name of Steve Zargon. Mr. Zargon told the accused that they would come and see him the following day to help him recover the deleted files on his MP3 player and that he should not come to the church. Huh. Arrangements were made for the accused mother to stay at the home of another student rather than go back to the premises in Fuller's Road. The premises in Fuller's Road was the room where she and her son were staying. Right. So she deserts uh, her son, who's clearly in need of, of 
uh, <laughs> Mike. Help. Yes. And, and look, I, I can understand that her son had just beaten her up. She may not want to be with him. But how is Scientology so irresponsible that they don't provide some person or someone to look after this boy overnight, but instead just send well, him back to this room by himself? Who just assaulted, assaulted someone. His mother. <laughs> it's, it's. I mean, the story just keeps getting crazier and crazier as you go through this timeline of events. So Steve Zagon promises that he is going to go to this Fuller Road house and help him recover his MP3 files. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Hmm. Steve Zagon never shows up. Oh, so guess so what? So now they have made a bad situation even worse. Okay, go so, ahead. Uh -huh. The next day, mm -hmm. Thursday, 3 January 2019, about 10 a.m., the accused mother attended the Church of Scientology. As normal, That's somewhere normal. between... <laughs> just like everything's normal, somewhere between about 11 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., the accused spoke to two other residents at the Fuller's Road premises about where he could find the two staff members from the church he had spoken to previously with respect to the deletion of the data on his MP3. These two gentlemen, Steve Zargon and whoever the other one, unidentified, were supposed to show up at the Fuller's Road house to help him recover his files and his MP3. Mm -hmm. They don't show up. So yeah. at about 12.01 p.m., right after the morning is done, because they said they would be there the following morning, mm -hmm. at 12.01 p.m., the accused walked into the grounds of the Church of Scientology at Chatswood. The events that transpired were captured on closed-circuit television footage. While the footage itself has not been tendered before me, an agreed summary of the contents of that footage has. Hmm. The following is taken from that agreed summary and other evidence. Okay, so <laughs> here we go. 12 o'clock, they say they're going to the Fuller's Roadhouse. They don't. Mm -mm. They go on, business as usual. He shows up at the Church of Scientology who encouraged or caused him to show up at the Church of Scientology after he had assaulted his mother there the night before? Mm -hmm. Not Leah Remini and the aftermath. Mm -hmm. Not Mike Rinder and his website. Mm -hmm. The people at the Church of Scientology facility who didn't show up and he came looking for them. Mm -hmm. That was why he was there. He mm -hmm. came to find the people who were going to help him with uncovering or recovering his MP3 files. Now, when uh, the, the people confronted or tried to stop him from mm -hmm. entering and he was demanding to see these, this Steve Zargon is when he stabbed the security guard in the neck. And unfortunately, tragically, that security guard died. Mm -hmm. It was only this whole thing was all generated internally within the Scientology organization by the actions that they had taken, both taking this boy off his drugs, uh -huh. moving him to a strange location, deleting, looking, spying on him and deleting his MP3 files, refusing to make good on that. Uh -huh. This was all known. But the final irony of this is that statement that, well, while they have the CCT fo CCTV footage, they didn't provide it to us. Right. 
Why not? Correct. Correct. Why not? There's and only one reason. Why? There is more incriminating stuff mm -hmm. about what Scientology did or didn't do mm -hmm. in this than even is contained in all these these little excerpts that we have gone through. Mm -hmm. And they were terrified of that stuff getting out. Mm -hmm. I would love to see that CCTV footage because who knows what is on it, but it is not good for Scientology. Mike, the sad thing about this is that an innocent Scientology Sea Org member, I'm assuming, a uh, staff member lost his life. Yes. No one, right, is really being held accountable. Now, the boy is uh, wasn't able to stand trial um, because he was, um, they didn't find him competent. competent. Um, but he is in, in jail. I mean, he's in prison, right? Or a mental incarcerated, I think, in a mental institution, but you know, for the criminally insane yeah. or whatever they call it. Yes. Uh, and rightfully so, Mike. I mean, he needs to be held accountable for his actions, right? Right. Um, but but Scientology uh, isn't, again, being held responsible for what they've done and what they didn't do and what they are hiding. And sure. the mother is not being held responsible for what she did and didn't do. And that's again maddening yes maddening. yes and and leah you would imagine that with um all of this and now all of this coming out into the open that scientology would go oops uh my bad nope nope this is the Scientology. This I pulled this up today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Green lighting hate, A and E, Disney, blood on their hands. Mm -hmm. The exact same stuff. This is a video that Scientology made mm -hmm. about how we incited the murder of a Scientologist in Australia. Mm -hmm. It is still there. Mm -hmm. They have not taken this down. Nope. They have not issued any apology. They have not said, oh, we were mistaken. They nope. haven't even come up with a bullshit, oh, we really didn't know what had happened. And now that we found out, we must admit that there wasn't any evidence that supports mm -hmm. the claim nope. that we made. Nope. None of that. Nope. That tells you everything you need to know yep. about the honesty and integrity and and willingness of Scientology to ever take responsibility for anything anything, anything. I mean Scientology Sea Org members right like Farney like McShane like civilian Scientologists are willing to say and do anything as they were in the 60s, as they were in the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s. They are willing to do and say anything to accomplish Scientology's goals. Yep. These are the people we're talking about that they, uh, they have never, they, they, they continue to shock me, Mike. They continue to shock me at how low they are willing to go, what they Leah, are willing to do. It, I, I, I honestly, this, this thing mm. shocks even me. Yeah. It shocks even me. And it is also shocking to read their, their claims that, all of these things that they are saying about you mm -hmm. are just their right to freedom of speech, right. to defend themselves. This is not freedom of speech. This is not defending themselves. This is manufacturing lies about someone to try and destroy their reputation because there is nothing that you can say that is worse 
then this person committed a murder. Mm -hmm. The next step below that is this person incited someone else to commit a murder. Mm -hmm. This knowing blatant lie is the microcosm of Scientology fair game. Yep. And I know this is a terrible subject. I know this is this is dark and heavy and whatever, but this is the reality of the world of Scientology. It really is. And it is the reality of what is going on with your fight in your lawsuit. It is the reality of what goes on with every lawsuit that Scientology is engaged in. It is not just you. It is everybody who ever goes up in in opposition to Scientology and litigation. It is the reality of what happens to anybody who speaks out about the abuses of Scientology. And it really, really, really needs to be brought to an end. Agreed. Thank you, Mike, for doing this today. <laughs> Thank you, Leah, for doing I, this today. Or like, it's like, oh, it's exhaust. It's exhausting. And that is the purpose of it. And by the way, what you said, Mike, is you should put up the, the three policies that OSA references their OSA programs on, because this is exactly what it says. Feed lurid sex crimes to the press and get it out there and where there isn't any manufacture them. Right. And yeah. And, and it's not just sex. Leah, yeah. it's blood yeah. sex. Yes. Blood. Yes. Leah blood Remini on has blood hands. on her hands. It is. This it is, is the this policies. Is yes. Word for word. Yes. Yes. And by the way, across the board, Mike, right. It doesn't yeah. matter if it's me, if it's you, if it's the Jane Doe's, it doesn't matter uh, where the, the, uh, um, where the person is, uh, doesn't matter what their occupation, doesn't matter if they were former Scientologists, never science, it doesn't matter. You will see the same across the board against every single person who has spoken out, any, every single person who has tried to do something about Scientology. It is the same thing. They accuse people of crimes they didn't commit. They accuse people of heinous acts. They accuse people of being associated with heinous acts and it will continue unless we stop this. Everybody has a right to defend themselves in a court of law. Everybody has a right to, to speak out, to speak out. Even, like, oh, I mean, Mike, I have always said uh, if Scientology thinks we have said things, excuse me, <clears throat> if Scientology believes that we have uh, said things that are untrue, our contributors, please bring a lawsuit to us. They never have yeah. um, because they know they can't. And uh, instead with their um, unlimited amount of funds and resources that are far reaching, this is instead what they do because they don't have the truth on their side. So hopefully we will all prevail in our lawsuits and our, and our pursuits for justice when it comes to Scientology and those who've committed crimes as Scientologists. Yep. Um, again, you guys, thank you for listening, for watching, for your support. Um, it's, it's a, it's a lot, but thank you. Yes. Thank until you all. And until next time, bye love, for now. Love you. Thank you for tuning in. You can find more episodes of exposing Scientology both on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget to check out my best-selling memoir, A Billion Years, My Escape from a Life in the Highest Ranks of Scientology. It's available on Amazon and as an audiobook. Until next time, be well and happy. <laughs>